morning for divine services. Our collect shall come from the third Sunday after Trinity. O oh Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to hear us and grant that we to whom thou hast given an hearty desire to pray may by thy mighty aid be defended and comforted in all dangers and adversities through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Now I shall read the prayer for our King. Most gracious God, who has set thy servant George, our King, upon the throne of his ancestors, we most humbly beseech thee to protect him on the same from all the dangers to which he may be exposed. Hide him from the gathering together of the, for, of the froward and from the insurrection of wicked doers. Do thou weaken the hands, blast the designs, and defeat the enterprises of all his enemies, that no secret conspiracies not open violences may disquiet his reign, but that being safely kept under the shadow of thy wing and supported by thy power, he may triumph over all opposition, that so the world may acknowledge thee to be his defender and mighty deliverer in all difficulties and adversities through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, the prayer for the time of war and tumults. O Almighty God, King of all kings, and Governor of all things, whose power no creature is able to resist, to whom belongeth justly to punish sinners, and to be merciful to them that truly repent. Save and deliver us, we humbly beseech thee, from the hands of our enemies. Abate their pride, assuage their malice, and confound their devices, that we, being armed with thy defense, may be persevered evermore from all perils, to glorify thee, who art the only giver of all victory, through the merits of thy only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our psalm this morning shall come from Psalm 18, verses 31 to 41. For who is God but the Lord? Or who hath any strength except our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength of war, and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like heart's feet, and setteth me up on high. He teacheth mine hands to fight, and mine arm shall break even a bow of steel. Thou hast given me the defense of thy salvation. Thy right hand also hold me up, and thy great loving correction shall make me great. Thou hast made room enough under me for to go, that my footsteps shall not idle. I will follow upon mine enemies and overtake them. Neither will I turn again till I have destroyed them. I will smite them that they shall not be able to stand, but fall under my feet. Thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou shalt throw down mine enemies under me. Thou hast made mine enemies also to turn their backs upon me, and I shall destroy them that hate me. They shall cry, but there shall come none to help them. Yea, even unto the Lord shall they cry, but he shall not hear them. Our epistle comes from 1 Peter chapter 5. All of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye may have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. Our gospel comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 15. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either one woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. The text for our sermon today comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Chapter 6, verses 13 to 17. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in that evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. As we stand here, nigh on the eve of battle, soldiers preparing for war, we have moment to reflect upon why we are here. Well, we are here in obedience to our King, rendering unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, as was Christ's commandment. What is more, Scripture is with, replete with stories that make it clear that God desires union within a family. And so here we are to re-establish fellowship with our British brothers and sisters in these colonies. And we may, we may also meditate upon our need for encouragement at this time. So to this end, let us look to the armor of God. It is significant that Paul should choose for the vehicle of his analogy, armor. Because men, we are at war. And when I say this, I do not mean only this earthly war, which our flesh and blood bodies are engaged on now. But I mean that there is a war that rages within the soul of every Christian man and woman. A war against the evil one, as he and his domination seek to distract us from those things which are important in life. We are all soldiers in this war. And a soldier must go into battle prepared. Everything that you carry on you has a specific purpose. So it is with the armor of God that each item listed has spiritual significance. That when we may come to understand it and understand it well, we may call upon this wisdom in the moment of tribulation without a moment's hesitation. I shall limit my discussion today to but three of these items. For uh, Paul, being a Roman citizen, would have been familiar with the language of the Romans. And in Latin, the most important elements in any sentence come at the beginning and the end. So let us look at those items on the list. The first thing we are charged with is that we should gird our loins in the truth. Now this refers to an ancient practice which was necessary in a suit of armor. You see, to gird your loins was to take up those portions of your clothing which did hang beneath the armor and to cinch them up in such a way that they will not provide a handhold for your enemy. And the truth which Paul speaks of is sincerity. For indeed, we can attempt to put on all of the other articles of the armor of God, the, the breastplate, the greaves. However, if it is not entered into sincerely, it comes to nothing. Just as a Roman soldier may be fully armed, but if he had not girt his loins, 
His enemy may seize him by his tunic and drag him down to the earth to his death. The last item in the list is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, when we speak of the Word of God, we often think of the Holy Bible as one text and thus as one sword. But I tell you that every verse within it is a sword unto itself. Think of how well prepared we are then. A full cartridge box is a comfort to a soldier, yes? Well, if we are familiar with the Word of God, we have much ammunition that we can use in this battle. Words of encouragement, words of rebuke, words of correction, and words of instruction. Training. If we are well trained as soldiers, we may better act as one man. And thus the enemy has greater difficulty to confound our stratagems. But there is another item that is conjoined with the sword of the Spirit, and that is the helm of salvation. And our salvation is like a helmet, for it is distinct and identifies the army that we serve. We have recognized that all men are flawed creatures, but there is one who is perfect, and perfect though he was, he died a horrible death, a death which should have been ours. And that if we recognize the necessity of this sacrifice, that Christ's blood may cover our sins, sins that we are often powerless to resist and always powerless to erase. In times of trouble and adversity, we may look with comfort and encouragement upon the armor of God. We girt our loins in the truth, and thus we are encouraged to know that our mind is clear from distractions, and that we are thinking of the truth of the goodness of our mission here. By taking up the sword of the Spirit, we take courage in the fact that we are well prepared for this battle. And by taking up the helm of salvation, we recognize that if we should be called upon to make the ultimate sacrifice for our nation, as Christ was sacrificed for us, that we may join him in eternal glory, where fear and death will have no more dominion over us. This is my encouragement to you. Let us at this time say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the town major does have some words for you.